I think that it's not conceivable that she will lead the Conservatives into another election. So I think that the realistic appraisal she has to make is how does she secure the best possible successor for the Conservative Party. And that may need a bit of time because two things have to be determined. First of all, the who, and there's no obvious choice. Uh, secondly, and just if probably even more important, the what. What are they going to say? My guess is general election in a year, 18 months' time, and uh, the period between now and then is going to be dominated by the same issues that have caused the trouble, the continuing austerity and the divisive nature of Brexit. In a sense, then, it doesn't matter what she says if you think she's not going to be around to implement it or to be held account for it. I think that the Queen's speech is going to be dominated by the jumbo Brexit bill and a number of smaller Brexit bills, and everything else will be relatively obscure in party political terms. And if Theresa May goes, does she take her own version of Brexit with her? Does I think that... it's already gone. I think that the idea of a hard Brexit is not credible. I don't think there's the majority for it in Parliament. Uh, we have a split cabinet, we have a split country, and uh, the, well, the opening shot, if you like, yesterday, the first meeting, uh, we lost the argument on the issue of uh, uh, the bill we're going to have to pay. We, didn't, we wanted to get on to the trade issues, vitally important. The French and the Europeans said no. We protested. What happened? They won. Do you think Brexit as it stands is dead? Yes, as in, in the hard sense that we're going to leave the whole thing and be our own independent sovereign nation. That is simply not the way the world is today working. But you think we will leave the EU? I'm not sure. I think that is very much open to question now. You, sir, are a staunch, unashamed Remainer. There'll be many here saying you're just hearing what you want to hear right now. Well, it's, <laughs> it's not really what I want to hear because I'm seeing uh, uh, my country humiliated. You know, though, that a change in leadership would be done by Tory party members and they are overwhelmingly in favour of a robust Brexit. Or do you think that there should be another coronation of the kind we've just seen? It, it would be better if there could be an agreement that wasn't as a consequence of a divisive leadership struggle. What I mean, do you mean? The How that... Well, the leadership struggle is already beginning. I mean, great protests of unity. We all know the form. No, 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 under no circumstances. But the friends of each of the potential participants are canvassing the House of Commons, looking for support. That's how it happens, and you can't stop it. We are seeing the government, minority government, without yet the support of the DUP. Do you think the Conservatives are better off with a deal or without one? I don't think it's relevant, because it won't last long enough to see this Parliament through simply the by-election phenomenon, which will start unavoidably and will reflect public disquiet, which is always there in the midterm, is a bigger threat than can be met by what looks like a very fragile relationship if it happens with the DUP. So is there anything that Theresa May can say tomorrow which would give her the authority to reset the clock and start again? I think that it will need a new leader to do that. Lord Hasseltine, thank you. Thank you.